All right, so hopefully you'll be able to get a sense of scale. The very center of your screen. Now, we've seen some large adits before, but that takes the cake. That is incredibly huge. And like I said, maybe a sense of scale off here to the right. Let me see if I can point them out. That's a road, mining road. And then you can see the dirt road up over the top of the mountain, so. And then to the left, you've also got was, which was once a little mining yeah. road that's all caved in now. So this all continued across. So all of that has collapsed, but it left open what would have been maybe the stope area, but that is, I say the sense of scale of that is absolutely incredible. So almost it makes of, it seem like the mountain's hollow. It kind of reminds me of that other mine that we did, the Minor Giants. Yeah, only much, much bigger. So there is no safe way to get over there. We would love to, to check it out, but I think we're gonna have to give that a miss. Out of our pay scale. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are, nearly at the top of the mountain. You can see off to the right side, the rows crisscrossing all the way up the side. In front of us, this beautiful group of trees, which is also the source of the spring up here. And of course, a little cabin. We made our way into the cabin here. Not a lot remains. See the extra board for insulation is peeling down off the ceiling. Uh, there's some bird's nests you can kind of make out up in there. It's cool that the window screen's still open. And then uh, over here to our left, got the remains of uh, a bird's nest up in there. Some old lounge chairs, some chaise lounge. And the door, which would separate the two rooms, so... What do you think, bunkhouse maybe? Possibly, but I have noticed there's pretty wallpaper. Oh yeah. Along the top. And there's also a hatch to get up into the, the roof. There is, and the paint that they used over here is very shiny. That's wallpaper. I meant uh, on the ceiling. Oh. Right, and just behind the cabin, up the hill, just a short jaunt, is this little structure. All made out of railroad ties. So, got some remains of, uh, looks like tires in their inner tubes or something. And some, uh, some rubbish down on the floorboards. Have you found anything over there? There used to be another structure here, and there is, I think, an old heater. All right. But nothing, nothing worth breaking your neck over to come over. <laughs> Whoops. But, I mean, take a look at that view. It's pretty impressive. That is. And I believe now this is an iron mine. And I think this is the first iron mine we've ever explored. And this was first discovered in 1906. Wow. And then again, I do want to see if I can make my way over to the edge of that road and get a, a better look at what's going on. Hopefully you can hear me, but I made my way over, excuse me, to where that massive opening is, just right there in the center of the screen. So hopefully from this vantage point, you can kind of get an idea of what's happened here. So down here, it's all just slidden 
down, broken away, opened up this whole mountainside. I'm walk over and get a glimpse. Oh boy, wind is strong. You can see just how far down this goes. Then over in the distance, kind of see the rest of the mining camp and just barely make out a piece of Tonto. So what's up in there? Well, st several structures. Again, this is a long structure, so I think these are bunk houses because we're so close to the mine. Right. And this, there's a couple of mines here um, and they're on lower levels. The camps are on two levels. So we're at the upper workings and the upper level. Yeah. And we will check out further down. Yeah, start at the top, do the hard part, and then going down. But I, I've noticed there's other remnants of other buildings and an old vehicle, but we won't be able to get to it because it's in marsh. All right, all of you car enthusiasts, we've got a doozy for you. Good luck with this one. It's been squished uh, by a rock slide. Yeah. <laughs> and this is part of that rock slide on the side of the mountain by the, the massive opening, but <laughs> no clue. And the it's, thing is, it's I don't know whether or not you can get closer. It's full of marsh. I don't know how deep the water is. Yeah, as I say, this is all just sort of the, the runoff coming down. Very beautiful. Again, you don't expect to see this much greenery and everything up here on the side of a, a mountain. But it's even the pretty flowers. I mean, there's... Uh, wild mint that I've just picked. Yeah. Pop it in your tea. I haven't said that one for a long time. No. Mogion. <laughs> and Mogion. And uh, some beautiful water lilies that are just coming out and they're gorgeous. They'd be beautiful when they're in full bloom. But, and on all the moss, kind of, kind of reminds me a little bit of England and how wet England is. And although the weather is really crappy over there, it is also very, very beautiful. And then here is a little space here that Andrea's found in really good condition. Let's see if we can open the door. That opens. The glass is shattered in there, but... And then inside... So that would keep your fingers and toes warm on a frosty night. Absolutely. So I believe these are wild lupins, at least that's what they look like. So uh, I'm sure one of the viewers will know what they are. So you've got wild lupins, that's what I'm going to say they are. And then you've got dandelion. And for those of you who know anything about dandelion, great in salads, make tea, do lots of things with dandelions, very, very good for you. And all of this is like just growing wild. As you can see from the outside, this just looks like the perfect little building. The siding's in beautiful shape. The roof tiles look perfect. It's almost like one of those little stations you'd see at the train stops where you would just buy your ticket or whatever. Walk inside, find some brochures, what have you. But inside is a completely different story, as you can see. The floor is just completely missing. So it looks like just a, a, like a tool shed, a work shed. Yeah, and it's this could be one where they just moved it from place to place as and when they needed to. Huh. Cool. It is. All right, so we are curious. We do believe this is a sign. We think it's one of those old neon signs but we're kind of unsure of why it would be way out here in the middle of a mining camp so we tried to look at the the top writing there it looks like r-i-n-o-s possibly rhinos have no idea 
but let us know what you think. Okay, I know we haven't done it in a while. Could this be the time? No trip would be complete without a trip to the loo. Although we think so, we're not quite sure on this one. If it is, it would have been a four-seater, so very cosy. Or it could have just been a little work shed, like a, a tool shop. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, because there's no kind of holes. No, and yeah, any remnants of it would have been has been torn apart, so it makes sense because if you will have a quick gander over yonder, you'll see we've got some bunk houses. And some vehicles a little bit over. Oh yeah. Okay, so this Bunk house. Oh yeah, you can definitely tell. Some of the remains on the floor from the walls coming down. And the ceiling. And the ceiling's gone. There was electricity there. And it peers down into the next room. room now. It's going to be a very similar layout. Looks like they had the stove right there. You got the vent pipe peeping out. This one had a nice window looking at the dirt hill. <laughs> Same with the door. Now I wonder when these were built. So iron was discovered in the area in 1906. These are obviously an earlier, uh, sorry, a later so what, maybe 30s, 40s by the construction? Yeah, I would say that. I know because a lot of the buildings at the port, um, which were in the 30s, have this very similar uh, wood paneling. So maybe even the late 20s then. Because mm. look at the, uh, on the outside, how each one is nailed. Yeah, it's like that cedar roofing when they do just each little piece, it lasts a long time. So, I mean, a, a lot of work was put into these and they had sash windows. Yeah. Is that what you call them over here? We call them sash windows in England. Yeah, you can call them sash windows. I'm sure there's another term that we use over here, but. And then the last bedroom on this side. Yep, very simple. And then we'll just go check out the next one. Okay, exact same as the first one, except Got a small bed frame still. Mattress frame, excuse me. Did you know the word exact is how you use it is actually incorrect. It should be identical, not exact. Fun fact, true story. Forgive me for misspeaking. <laughs> I say exact as well. But uh, so you can see the sash windows. So what here. identically is in this window? <laughs> Well, this Ooh. one isn't identical at all because it's got a, um, it's all been caved in. So mudslide, because that would have been opposite the window and That's the, the door. So the earth is coming in. The earth moved for them. <laughs> and you got a little bird's nest up there. Oh yeah, cool. And then this one, identical, well, identical in some ways. I, 
so it doesn't have a door. I wonder if that's the doorway through to the next cabin. So I wonder if it was like bunk beds and each, because they seem to have like an interior door and two rooms. Yeah. So I wonder if it was like a bedroom and have maybe two bunks or, yeah, so four four guys. Um, and then the other area would be kind of like a, a little seating, a kitchen area or something. Possibly. Yeah, because out here they've got the bunkhouse yeah, and this the is... restroom, but where is the, uh, the kitchen? Yeah, so again, so you've got an outside door and then you've got an internal door. That's right. what... That's what I'm guessing. And you've even got lino. Look at the thick, funny patted lino. Oh, wow. It's pretty cool. It is. Look at this beauty right here. It's a pretty color. The green. Color of rust. No, 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 the green that's underneath. It is a beauty, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm not a car person, but even I can appreciate this. So what is it? Do you know, or are we going to have to ask the audience? We're going to have to poll the audience. So like I say, we're, neither one of us are car experts. I wonder what's in the boot. I wonder if we can get the boot open. Well, I can tell you right now. Oh, is it empty? No. Is it open? <laughs> the petrol oh. tank's gone. Tank's gone, probably used for mining operation. Yeah, this would be a parts vehicle. But the front seat is still intact in here, minus the upholstery. This Had... is, uh, this is, yeah, this is really cool. It is. It's always something to see. I know we keep, we've seen this several times, these vehicles left out, but it's still just, it's really cool to see them in this environment. So I wonder where the door's gone. The bonnet's there. Yeah, that is always a thing, because you, you think about, okay, who drove it up here if it was drivable? You know, was it one of the miners who didn't want it anymore, became a parts car, or was getting ready to get a new one, or what the story behind these are, or if they just found them at a salvage yard and, and brought them up here for parts? Who, you just never really know, but you want to know. The, a lot of the engine's still in, in place. It is. That's a, okay, let's see here if I can get this right. They have one, two, three, straight six. I was gonna say it was a six cylinder. I'm, I'm learning. You are a mechanic. You just uh, <laughs> pretend like you don't I know was, I was just wondering whether or not there's uh, anything on the bonnet that would give it away. Well, it's, the emblem's you know, missing from the front. What I like about these old cars, obviously they've got so much character, mm -hmm. but when you look at them, you can understand like the Pixel car movie, how they made them faces. They look like they've got faces. You yeah. know, the headlights, are, this is, it's just. Well, they are, each one. Pretty. Each one was a character in itself. It's like Tonto. You know? Yeah, exactly, Tonto's like Tonto. A character. He's got character, he's got style, he's got class can do anything like its owners exactly <laughs> true story right but no it is i mean they did all they there was pride in craftsmanship in all the car manufacturers back then they wanted something to stand out to be you know sought after nowadays you know they do make them really cheaply and just mass produce them to try to get it Economical, I guess, but. Well, it's like virtually everything that you yeah. buy now. Nothing's done with pride. It's lost its We're flair. in a throwaway society. Absolutely. Shall we check out the, the truck? Uh, trucks next. Oh, so this would be a different truck bed. It's not the bed for that one because the bed's already there. And the truck. Again, pull the audience. But well, don't they say that sometimes it's on the inside of the... Well, it may be if that's not rusted through. At least this has still got the doors on it. E I... 
Yeah, because I like the plates missing off the firewall here. No, it's diddy. It's tiny inside. It is. But still, I mean, that's the other thing about... Oh, weren't shut now. Back in the day, driving these things, it made you feel a certain kind of way, you know? Yeah, I can imagine. And again, a lot of the engine's still there. Yeah. See, now it's got one headlight, and again, it looks like Eyes. a face. <laughs> This one's still got the spark plugs in it. That's, that's amazing. Oh, and this still spins. Fan still spins. Yep. It's pretty it's cool. It's a GM. Okay. GM General motor. Motors. So, this old Chevy. So, you know what that means. Put some fuel and some brand new oil, this thing will fire right up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's a GM. Oh, I've got it here. An 839401, and then underneath it's got six, and then it's got CONV-12. L-10-0. Incredible. Like they made a, a grill on the front of this thing at a ore car rail. Oh yeah, of course it is. How funny. So I wonder what they were, I wonder if they were moving rocks and stuff with it. Well, well that's the thing. I mean, there's a lot of rock slides and this used to carry on and the whole mountain seems to be just disintegrating. Yeah. Huh, let's see what else we can find. On the opposite side of where the bunkhouses are, you might be able to make out there's a very large boulder inside this building here, which is taking it down. This looks like it could have been maybe like a wash house or something. There's a massive sink in there, double sink. And then just next to it, a little spring running down. This jumbled pile here, as we were mentioning to earlier, I believe this possibly could have been the cookhouse. Because of that, right back there, it looks like an oven. Make my way over some of this stuff real fast. And so there we go everything you could possibly want right here on the side of a mountain. Well, I do reckon we got ourselves a little dump truck here. Come here. Just next to them, this, all this waste rock, the size of that pile. Imagine this thing driving up and down these mining roads, supplying the water. <laughs>